We grow vegetables for 70 share members, uh, probably well in the neighborhood of 150 families. And so we don't use any pesticides or chemical fertilizer and that sort of thing. We produce all of our, our fertility on the farm. And I suppose we could just make a note of the hoop and uh, the agribon, or sometimes it's called rime. So it, it can really do a number of things, but first and foremost, on any sort of brassica crop, it'll keep the pests out without any sort of spraying whatsoever. It does an amazing job. It also increases the temperature under there about three or four degrees, which can help on either side of the season or even a cool summer. It'll warm it up. And uh, it just creates this really amazing growing environment under there that a lot of crops like. When you're spraying for pests, that's, uh, you still got to be out there, you still got to be out numerous times, you know, whether it's once a week or whatever your schedule is. And, uh, well, you know, I guess there's pros and cons, right? We put this up once and then it's up and you don't have to do anything. Maybe take it off once to weed, you put it back on. So, I mean, we have a small operation. Uh, I used to have up to seven horses in there plus cows and it would produce a lot of manure. So, the, you know, there's a little, well, there's always runoff. Every time it rains, there's runoff. And so it runs into the pond and we have a ditch going out this way to the, to the main ditch along the road. Um, but we try to hold it back and we let the reeds grow. Uh, you can see it's quite a natural uh, ecosystem here. Um, so, yeah. And the function of the reeds is a, is a filtration process, is that right? Filtration, the reeds uh, suck up a lot of nutrient-rich uh, water and uh, expirate it into the atmosphere. So. And it's interesting is that they just arrived on their own. We didn't plant the reeds. They just showed up. It, it was actually really interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I thought, oh, we're going to have to develop and plant and... No. I was on a dairy in Ontario, and a certified organic dairy, and there they wanted, they put a lot of straw into the manure, and they, instead of down underground using water flushing it, they went above ground and piled onto a huge concrete pad, and so when it rained, it would drain into a deep pit, which then they, as soon as it filled, they didn't ever let that overflow, and they would pump it out into a truck and go to the hay field and spray it onto the hay field when it was a more stable situation. Like compost tea. Yeah, it's manure it's, tea. It's perfect. The way we manage our landscape is to let it go to what it wants to go to. The only places that we want to control what's going to grow is in our gardens, of course. And so we do uh, rotation. We do f black fallow in the beginning of the season. And, and then we want to plant a green manure thick and get it going strong so that it's going to choke out most of the weeds. And, uh, and then we work that into the soil as organic matter and fertility, just as well as our compost. But everywhere else, it just, we let happen what happens. I think it would be in this organic regulations and stated as a, as a strategy, yes, as an environmental strategy. I mean, certainly the farm I described, the organic dairy in Ontario, they were using a strategy where they would not let any runoff go to the ditch. So uh, I haven't read the organic standards manual for a while, but I believe that it would, it would certainly be a part of that. For sure. And I think even for our farm to have a larger uh, dugout would, would definitely be a benefit for sure. And, and it's really a windmill in the middle. And a windmill in the middle. We haven't got That's there right. yet. But I mean, it's the more aerated, you, right? this could be aerated. Yeah. Because you can see the algae growing in the pond, which isn't good for this pond, but it's better there than in the lake. Right. We generally don't use the water that's, that's in our dugout. If it was a little larger and we aerated it, and we could pump it onto certain parts of our gardens as, a, you know, more of a manure compost tea kind of thing. If we have to swim, sure. we go to the lake. Right. No, we don't swim here. <laughs> it's interesting that you're keeping the waste from your property on your property and not dumping it into our collective property. Mm -hmm. Well, we right. uh, we do try to generate our own fertility and deal with our own waste, so it's a close system.
what I produce and grow here directly is uh, is a part of me as a, as a physical being. I am the soil. I am the plants. I am I am what I eat, and uh, I can see what I eat, and I know what's been put on it.